I think it's hard to uh, miss the message today, isn't it? That we are to pray. And that's why we're here. We come to Mass for the Eucharist, and that's the greatest prayer the Church has. So by the fact that we're here, we, we pray. But it's more than that, too, because in participating in the Eucharist, we participate in the life of Christ, and he participates in our lives as well. But let's deep, take, do a deeper dive into this, this parable. Now, the first reading, we hear about Moses in the fight. Are we supposed to pray for winning a war? That's what it sort of sounds like, doesn't it? But how many wars are there in our lives that we need to pray for? The battles that we face, the spiritual battles that we face, the battles our society faces, they're the things we need to pay for, pray for as well. And let's talk about the two characters that are in the gospel parable. You have the judge, and it doesn't say why he's unjust, but he obviously doesn't fear God, and he doesn't respect any human being. And the judges were put into to the Israelite community for a reason. They were to, first off, acknowledge that the supreme judge was God, not man, but God. And secondly, their job was to keep harmony among the people and keep peace in the, amongst the, the Israelite community and to be fair in their judgments. And then the widow. Widows, I, I, you know, we all know people who are widow. There may, I'm sorry, sure there's possibly somebody here who's a widow or a widower. And we understand what that means. But back then, it had a much different meaning. A woman did not share her husband's property. So when he died, she was on the fringes of society. She was done. His property, his wealth, would go to his son, or, if no son, his brother. Now, Jesus tells us to pray in this parable, but he doesn't tell us who to pray for, does he? There's no mention of who to pray for. But if we believe that God is compassionate, and he is, and the judge was supposed to use God's compassion, then the, the prayer has to be for those who are less fortunate than us, for the people who are widows, who are on the edge of society, and not just people who have lost a spouse. How many other widows are created, and orphans and strangers in our lives, are created by the, the social unrest that's occurring in our society? by the shootings that occur daily. There's lots of painful widows and orphans and strangers that are being created by all those acts, and that's what we need to pay for, pray for. We need to pray for the compassion that we can have. We have to have compassion to our, our neighbors, to people that are the orphans, the widows, and the strangers. Not always easy to do but we must do it. That's what we're compelled to do. And then we have the end where Jesus says, when the Son of Man returns, will he have faith? We know in the early church, and even in the time of Jesus in Israel, you had Anna the prophetess who greeted Mary, Joseph, and Jesus at his presentation at the temple. She prayed unceasingly, day and night, in the temple. And that's what widows were to do. And even in the early church, the widows were commissioned to praying constantly for the church. So we have to become like a widow and pray constantly. And then when the Son of Man comes, will he find in us the faith that a widow has? So we have to pray that we who are his elect, when he comes, we will have the faith of a widow.